Man, get my shirt buttoned up. One meeting to the other. I love being here with you guys. Thank you so much. What a day. Wow. Starts early in the morning. And it, uh, folks, thank you for honoring me by being here right now. I just found out my dear niece, Missy, loves the show and listens all the time. She's in uh, Utah. What a wonderful lady she is. Uh, a lot of you. You may see the numbers. It's, we didn't have any idea this live show would become so popular. <clears throat> if I've got one, I've got 20 this week texts or emails from friends of mine, uh, half of them doctors, who have sent me the things you've seen. Maybe some of you. I'll bet you in Facebook or uh, YouTube or any of our social media platforms, I'll bet you guys have let me know about this. What do you think? Do I get a, oh, pretty cool, huh? It was not so long ago that our doctors couldn't say the F word, fungus. Um, today, let me read you a couple of headlines. New York Times, just the other day, hours ago. The plague killing frogs everywhere, uh, killing frogs everywhere is far worse than our scientists thought. The most deadly pathogen known to science, chytrid. Uh, scientists first noticed it in 1970s. Some frog populations were minimizing. Uh, in other words, they were dying. By the 1980s, species had been eradicated. They're extinct. And now salamanders, you know, polywogs, amphibians are disappearing. Uh, and some of you sent me that. It's being called the worst deadly pathogen, or the most deadly pathogen known to science. Here's what a doctor friend of mine not more than 10 minutes ago sent me. At least 587 cases have been confirmed over the last few years of an emerging fungal infection identified by U.S. authorities as a serious global health threat. D by the way, you remember AIDS? Are any of you guys my age? Uh, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS. Remember in the 1982-83? Nobody's going to live to the year 2000. It didn't matter if clocks were going to change and our computers were going to cross over and Y2K even happened. We were going to all be dead in the next 18 years of AIDS. Okay, Here we have the U.S. health authorities. I'd love to meet one of them. A serious global health threat. Centered primarily in New York, New Jersey, and Chicago. Candida auris. Infection spread to a dozen states by the end of February. CDC is alarmed. The fungus, also referred to as C. auris. Now, folks, there are many species, subspecies of Candida. Tropicalis, you've seen them, albicans, etc. Here's a new one, Candida auris, A-U-R-I-S. is resistant to some or all antifungal medication, making it hard, if not impossible, to treat. Go with me here. Found in hospitals and long care facilities. It can quickly lead to death in patients who have weakened immune systems or underlying serious medical problems. Who is in a hospital or a long-term care facility? But people with uh, long-term health problems or seriously compromised immunity. More than one in three patients with an invasive candida auris fungal infections has died. It's taken us by surprise, says Dr. David Perlin. We don't really know why globally this bug has burst uh, all over uh, the world. We're seeing it in hospitals. They keep saying we're seeing the hospitals. So there, uh, folks, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. I told you so, okay? It was in 2007 that the Journal of Microbiology said, look, we got a serious problem. Okay, go, that's a dozen years. We got a serious problem. Uh, yeast and fungus are seriously compromising people, injuring them, and killing. It, it is fully capable of killing a human being, and yet our doctors don't know about this. A dozen years ago. So are we shocked? Do we raise our eyebrows when we see the tadpoles and frogs and, and, and people are dying? Okay, I'll give you my hypothesis on all of this. Um, on, in other news, I just got back from a great meeting with a couple of doctor friends. 
I just want you to hear this. I don't know which one of these to read you. Let's go to Harvard. Well, here, Science Daily, February 22nd, 2019, a few weeks ago. Over the past 20 years, concentrations of pharmaceutical medications have increased freshwater sources all over the world, have increased in freshwater sources. As research uh, by environmental experts has revealed, levels of the antibiotic Cipro have reached the point of potentially causing damaging ecologic effects. Duh. See, when I read you this, I read it to you for a reason. Scientists first began noticing frogs disappearing in 1970s. I remember this. I mean, I was in this field. I've been in it for 50 years. I remember frogs and some tadpoles dying, and they grew this gross stuff on their body, as a matter of fact. Amphibians are infected with fungus by contact with other animals or by spores floating in the water. Aren't mycotoxins antibiotics? Aren't they spores? Folks, not only are we dumping, and I'll go into that, not only are we dumping pharmaceutical drugs into our freshwater supplies, uh, but we are also doing something that every human does. It's called urinating. And eventually, that gets into our water supplies also. Hate to be the one to tell you. I remember 25 years ago reading about the amount of estrogen and birth control pills getting into our water supply today at lunch. John and I were with these two doctors and, you know, I ordered a bottle of water and then, gosh, I thought about what I'm talking about today. How super pure. This is why I like hyper hydrogenized water, hydrogenated water, double uh, bond hydrogen. Um, how, how do we get this stuff out of our water? What is safe water? But you got to hear this. Past 20 years, concentrations of pharmaceutical drugs have increased in freshwater sources all over the world, uh, damaging levels of antibiotics. The Harvard Newsletter, June 2011, eight years ago. Water quality experts and environmental advocates are increasingly concerned about another kind of water pollution, chemicals from prescription drugs and over-the-counter medications that get leaked into our lakes, rivers, and streams. How bad is the problem? Now remember, this is eight, nine years ago. A study conducted by the U.S. Geological Survey in 1999, a decade ago, and 2000, found measurable amounts of one or more medications in 80% of all the water samples drawn from a network of 139 streams in 30 states. The drugs identified include a witch's brew of antibiotics, antidepressants, blood thinners, heart medications, ACE inhibitors, calcium channel blockers, digoxin, hormone, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, and painkillers. Scores of studies have been done. Sewage treatment, uh, treatment plants are not currently designed to remove pharmaceuticals from our water supply. Can you say it with me? Houston, we have a problem nor are the facilities that treat water to make it drinkable able to get out pharmaceutical drugs. Harvard. Man, this is like, this is amazing. Uh, so the two most concentrated amount of drugs they're finding is an anti-epileptic drug, Tegretol and Cipro. Anybody ever had a prescription for Cipro? We all have. America collectively, the world collectively can say, yeah. Here's my problem, folks. I really believe, let me read you this. Amphibians are infected with fungus by contact with other animals or by spores floating in the water. The fungus invades skin cells and multiplies. It starts with fungus. An infected frog's skin will start to peel away as the animal grows very sluggish. Before it dies, a frog may manage to hop its way into a new stream or pond, thereby spreading the fungus even further. Recall, if you've been with me for quite some time, that I've been reading science for so long, the catchfly plant, Dr. Doug Gill, G-I-L-L, -L, wrote that if fungus impregnates a catchfly plant, it no longer spews catchfly pollen. It spews 
fungus. Is this the weirdest science fiction you have ever heard of? Snails, with those little snouts, my brother and I used to touch them with a pencil and they go whoop, whoop, you know. Um, snails climbing some trees that have a fungus growing on it. The fungus turns the snout of the snail bright orange. And you're like me 20 years ago. What? What? Why? So birds can see the fungus, see the snouts, swoop down on the snail, kill the snail, and take it with him because that's the mode of transportation for some fungus. B-I-Z-Z-R. Bizarre. I mean, it's so, all this stuff wants to do is, it, this is taxi cabs, this is Ubers for fungus snails, pollen. It moves around by manipulating you and me. This is bad stuff, guys. This is bad stuff. So where, uh, where does all this come together? Two stories converge here. And there are many, many stories. You guys tonight can go on. Just, just type in pharmaceutical drugs in our water supply. And, one, and the most populated is a mycotoxin, is a fungus, is an antibiotic. Folks, this is why in the 1970s, thank you, sir, wow. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Um, this is why we began to see frog populations minimize in the 1970s. Uh-oh, 1980s. Uh, they've become extinct. These species of frogs are becoming extinct. There's now an article I read the other day that 40% of our amphibians are gone. And you think, who can put this together? They have these really bright scientists. Look at all these papers I went over. These really, really bright scientists saying, we don't know. We can't figure this one out. Did we just do it? In 1970, we probably had a few tons of pharmaceutical drugs in our water supply. Somebody wrote this. Let's see if I can read it to you. The numbers were just astronomical. Okay, here it is. It's on a website called seccua.com. Secua, it's a German website. Drug and pharmaceutical residues in our drinking water. Approx this is Germany. Approximately 30,000 tons of pharmaceutical drugs are dispensed in Germany each year. 30,000 tons of prescriptive drugs. 95% of that volume is excreted in the patient's urine and cannot be filtered out by wastewater treatment plants, only to enter the country's surface waterways and eventually our groundwater. One, this is fascinating. One third of human prescriptions are disposed of or unused. Do you do that? If you have a prescription, I, I don't have prescriptions, but uh, if I did, as I read through this article, I might flush them. I mean, what do you do with, with old drugs? What do you do when drugs get old? Um, do you, okay, so that's a good question because a couple of years ago, I got the flu really bad uh, and I got uh, an antibiotic and I took it for a few days. Um, and I'll bet that is still in the bottom drawer there in the bathroom. I'll have to pull that out and see, what do I do with that? So they're saying one third of prescription drugs are disposed of unused. And there's 30,000 tons a year, tons in Germany. We're in North America. Can you imagine the staggering numbers of how many antibiotics, mycotoxins, are ending up in our water supply? Do you remember a couple years ago when the statin makers wanted to put statins in our water supply? Because folks, they're just good people. They wanted to save more lives than the 166 million people they purport that they've saved their lives, or 166,000 that they purport have have not had a heart attack thanks to their drugs. It's kind of funny with drug companies. The side effects are, are quite dangerous. And if you are like Doug Kaufman and you resist, you've enjoyed good health, you don't need medications, um, you're gonna get them. 
it, John, it makes me think. Remember those guys who would come up to us at these meetings and talk about low T? You, you begin to study this stuff, and it's just kind of mind-boggling. What's happening to our testosterone? What's happening to estrogen? You know, what happens if we get too much testosterone in our blood supply? There's a medication for it. There's a medication for it. You bet there is. Um, what I want you to do, and I see you want to talk today, and so I'm going to let you. You will have questions. You guys can study this. Fungal metabolites are ending up in our fresh water supply where our amphibians live. Okay, Doug, but you didn't explain Candida auris. <clears throat> These are three graphics in 2016 I gave to a room full of doctors. They asked me if I would write a presentation on why our antibiotics are no longer working. Three years, uh, yeah, 2016. Question, why are we seeing all of these antifungal medication resistant Candida species? Because it's not just antibiotic resistant bacteria. It's antifungal resistant medication. It's not killing yeast. Because yeast and fungal infections are being routinely treated with antibiotics. This is what I said in 2016. I got this in the American Society of Microbiology. And listen to this quote. In this analysis of data from a national candidemia study, we found that recent exposure to antibacterial drugs affected the risk of bloodstream infections with fluconazole-resistant candida. Recently treated with antibiotics, when you got a yeast infection, not a bacterial infection, diflucan-resistant yeast growing in your body, is that not what Candida auris is? Let me take it a step further. I should put these online, shouldn't I, so you guys could. This, this is probably, John, see if they can read this. I, I just want to make it large, so in case, mm, oh. oh boy. You can? Okay. I can't. <laughs> I should put it on the back. Do antibiotics cause mutant? By the way, you should see the doctors. Salt of the earth. Wonderful men and women. Do antibiotics cause mutant fungal species or vice versa? Get this. This is Dr. Vincent Bruno. I've never met this man. He published Infectious Diseases in Children, November 2016. In laboratory settings, Bacteria that have been co-incubated with certain fungi have demonstrated enhanced resistance to antibacterial in a test. In vitro means outside of our body. In vivo are studies done in humans, right? So in vitro, a test tube. And what Dr. Bruno did is he put, if you co-incubate Staph aureus, a bacteria, with Candida albicans in that same tube, at least in laboratory settings, Staph aureus becomes resistant to vancomycin. Vancomycin is the drug of last hope for Staph aureus infections. It ain't going to work if you got yeast in there. Do you see how we've been able, collectively, you and I, have been able to put a period on the end of that sentence, or worse, an exclamation point? What are you guys thinking? Why are you throwing antibiotics at us like they're going out of style? And they are. Therapeutic mycotoxins like antibiotics induce fungal mutations. Antibiotic-induced DNA damage and genomic instability occurs across a diversity of bacteria and fungal pathogens. Um, what I'm trying to say is how many years what's well, been 80 years, we've been treating fungal infections with antibiotics. You can't do that. That's not okay. Because mutated forms of bacteria and yeast that God put in our bodies are going to form when you're throwing a poison at them. Mycotoxins are poison. Thank God they kill tiny bacteria in tiny doses. None of us take, or few of, I guess my audience, none of you take antibiotic after antibiotic after antibiotic. But the general public loves doctors 
and loves going to doctors and loves going on medications. And let me come clean, let me be transparent. When I got back from Vietnam, my roommate Don will attest to this. Somehow I ended up flying from Vietnam to Los Angeles in 1971. And when I opened that big chest with all my you know, clothes and my old Navy uniforms and these old boots, there was a bottle, a big bottle of Pen VK, John, I kid you not, 500 milligram. How did I get that? But folks, we were the guys, your husbands, your grandpas might attest, we were the guys that flew home from Vietnam with our guns in our holsters. We didn't go through TSA. Okay, we have to now, because we're a risk. We're old guys, we're a risk now. But we always didn't have to. Thank you, sir. I want you to just start thinking. When we're taking non-judicious um, antibiotics, non-judicious meaning, uh, you know, Doug, I'm, I have a yeast infection. Well, here's an antibiotic. Wrong. Give me an antifungal. When a physician is prescribing or non-judiciously prescribing an antibiotic for what he's guessing is a bacterial problem, he's not doing you good, folks. Uh, because that antibiotic, from my documents, says it's going to mutate not only the yeast, but also some of the bacteria. And so we're going to end, what is C. diff? It's an iatrogenic infection. It's a doctor, hospital, prescription pad induced problem. Diarrhea. We're throwing out far too many and, oh, sorry. I think Candida auris for the fungal family is analogous to C. diff and MRSA, methicillin resistant Staph aureus of the bacterial family. We've been erroneously prescribing drugs, and folks, I haven't seen the end of drugs yet. These pharmaceutical hotshots are having a field day putting well people on drugs, and it's a multi-billion dollar business. But it's not, er, my wife is right. Stop it, Doug. It's not their problem. They're doing what you'd probably do as a businessman. Honey, you're not going to believe this. I used to give sick people drugs. Now well people who are perfectly fit are taking them. Why are they taking them? We're telling them it's saving their life from a heart attack. Are you? I don't know, but they're taking them. It's working. It's we the people that are behaving foolishly. I wish each of you with all of these questions today um, could be 70 years old, 70 years young, and feel like I feel. I wish, if you're 30, I wish you could feel as good as I feel at almost 70 years old, young. It's a joy to feel this good, it really is. So when we're talking about all these amphibians, I'm sad because I remember the kids, we bought some acreage when we moved from Los Angeles, you know, the home we sold was probably a million dollars in 1987, the, the, the ranch the 4,000 square foot home, the creeks, the pond, the hundreds of trees, the acreage, uh, the jogging trail I built into it was two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Um, I can't tell you how good that was for my boys. We planted food, you know. We we couldn't afford. I'll never forget Blue Shield Blue Cross was two hundred dollars a month, and we couldn't afford it. We were a family of four. So we forego, we, we went without health insurance, but here's what we did. We kept the boys well. Well, how do you do that? You know the path I cut in on the back 11 acres of the property with the tractor? They'd get out there with us and jog or walk. It's too hot today, 105 degrees. Yeah, but Ethan, when you sweat, that's really good for your body because you know we ate some jello or ice cream the other day and so we want to get that out of our body. After we're done, we're gonna go jump in the pool. There is a, we couldn't afford $2,400. Do you want health insurance or would you prefer health assurance? That's what we got. Little tiny pairs of Keds, walking shoes, little shorts so they could sweat, jump on the trampoline, jump in the pool, play outside. Uh, and we didn't have health insurance. And I don't know what I would have done if anything happened. We were a young family. I wish all of you could feel now at this age as good as I do. I hope I have many years left. I never know, nobody knows. Certainly a doctor doesn't. God knows. But if I continue feeling this good, boy, oh boy, is that good. Oh, look at, here's 
Uh, Doug, can you please talk about a certain type of candida called Oris? <laughs> okay, I just did. Where is this coming from? That's on uh, YouTube. Is it coming from our abuse? That's the only way I can say it, and it's a word that fits. Our gross abuse of prescribing antibiotics. I think it is. I think it's analogous to C. diff and MRSA. Okay, but who am I, right? Okay, you guys, man, are you, are you in here today and you wanna talk? I'll do what my wife says, Doug, zip your lip and <laughs> answer their questions. They don't wanna hear you. Okay, all of my notes. You know, John, what we ought to do sometime is post my notes. I mean, if you're brand new to this, folks, um, if you're brand new to this, these notes would really help you. I want you to know my website is 20 years old. It has thousands of pages. There's a little search engine at the top. I want to learn about mushrooms. Type away. Doug, I have CF, cystic fibrosis. Type away. Is Alzheimer's fungus type away? And Dr. Uh, uh, what's his name, my friend, who's writing our research paper. I see his face all the time and I can never remember his name. He writes, every month we pay him to, uh, uh, Dr. Luke Curtis, to, to get us new research papers linking fungus to illness. So there are thousands. Just go in the Science of Fungus on our homepage, click it, and you'll find papers in there. Why? It's one thing to educate you. I think that's good. It's a whole other thing to be able to take two papers on my arthritis uh, into a doctor and let he, him or her look at it. Here's a good question, Steve. Um, so we talk about HEPA filters, and HEPA filters, folks, there are HEPA filters, uh, uh, paper type uh, filters, like coffee filters, that enable smaller organisms. And man, you talk about mycotoxins, Steve, you got a whole new bailiwick. Uh, uh, fungus can be stopped by, your question is a good one, three to five angstroms. Fungus and bacteria can be stopped with, you know, three to 10 angstrom filters. It's almost solid paper. That's probably something like that, you know. Um, mycotoxins, Steve, are a whole other problem. No one's isolated. You can't go online and see a mycotoxin. It's poof. It's a gas. It's a liquid. It's a solid, a solid emitted from a poisonous fungus. There are 300 species, so there's probably over a thousand mycotoxins, and 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 it's tinier than three to five angstrom. I really don't know how we're going to get rid of these things. It's become a major problem. The corn we're eating, the peanuts we're eating, the alcohol we're drinking, the antibiotics we're taking, the wheat we're eating, uh, mycotoxins. Fungus on those products uh, uh, downgrades that fungus. As the fungus falls apart, a poison forms. God forbid it happens in our body. So really good question. I, don't, I think fungus and, and uh, pharmaceutical drugs, et cetera, you're good, Steve, with a three to five angstrom filter. I think pharmaceutical drugs, given that they're mycotoxins, isn't penicillin the mycotoxin of penicillium? Yeah, it is. How are you gonna get rid of that in your drinking water? I don't know. I don't know, but my brain still works and I'm gonna figure it out. Mary, pharmaceuticals aren't safe for our water or environment, but they're safe for injecting into newborns. <laughs> they're safe for injecting into newborn children. Um, Mary, you know, thank you for who you are. Um, I have seen penicillin save children's lives. They were so infected. Green snot, green sputum, couldn't breathe. Boom, a shot in the hip. Two days later, you're on the ward when I was in San Diego working with the doctors and nurses. I didn't cry at 18 or 19 years old, I don't think, until I got to Vietnam. Um, but you would have. That same child took a shot of penicillin and it's alive. Use is good, abuse is bad. Let me put it that way. 
Uh, pharmacies across the country, like pharma uh, take your pharmaceuticals back. <laughs> Spread the word, folks. No more flushing for the love of our children and our children's children. When I read that article about birth control pills, estrogen, that I was drinking, it's no wonder. You know, it's no wonder what's happening to our world. It's no wonder, folks. Um, we're, why are women, postmenopausal women, getting estrogen-receptive cancers? Maybe because they're drinking the water. You can't stop urinating. I mean, it's really, in my humble opinion, we've fallen for it hook, line, and sinker. I don't think the answer to curing comes from a pharmaceutical. Not yet, maybe one day. Didn't we fund the war on cancer? Richard Nixon, I remember this, in 1980, funding the billion dollar a year war on cancer. Well, okay, that was a few years back, 40. Where's the war on cancer? Simply put, many magazine articles have bottom lined it. We've lost it. Oh, sorry, we took the $40 billion. Oh, it went to drug companies. Paid a lot of doctors. Are you comfortable with that? Uh, okay, thank you, perfect aim. Most towns have an unused drug drop-off. Really? It's probably opioids. People are dropping them off and they got a back door. You know, here, here you go, 40,000 bucks for, no, I'm kidding. What about Candida auris? Is it curable? Sarah, therein lies the $10,000 question today. I got to be honest with you guys. I, for the same reason, I have insurance on my car just in case. I'm an old guy now. Oh, you mean the one on the right's the accelerator? The one on the left's the brake, okay? For the same reason I have insurance on that car, I take beta-glucan every day. And I gotta tell you, this is a good time for me. Here's what I have in my medicine cabinet, in the kitchen and in the bathroom. We don't have a medicine cabinet in the kitchen. These stay up on the counter. Optivita, does your medicine cabinet have the lozenges and the drops, right? This is silver, not colloidal silver. It's a better silver. I'll see you guys. That's right, you get to go home now. I have to stay here. Um, this, together with their hemp product, together with their, and I love liposomal, their liposomal, thank you, curcumin, these are products we all need. There's my medicine cabinet at home. Might have two or three strange kinds of toothpaste. Have you tried, John, the uh, charcoal toothpaste? No. You will laugh so hard. Tonight, before you go to bed, get some charcoal, it's black and brush your teeth, you know, you floss, then brush your teeth, and then smile into the mirror. <laughs> your teeth are black. However, it's quite good at absorbing off the enamel, and uh, so I have charcoal, and I have several different kinds of toothpaste. You gotta try it, John. But what I want is a, a snapshot of it, if you could shoot one on the phone and get it to me. So this is Optivita. They have a toll-free number. He'll put it up just in case this should be in everyone's med. Oh, by the way, I love this. Do you want to try their hemp? This is $5. Just open it up, put it in a glass of water, squeeze it out, and uh, try it. Uh, I think it's helped a lot of people with children with epilepsy, people who don't sleep well, etc. cetera. Uh, this is their hemp product. You get five of them for $25 in a little envelope. I love this company, Optivita. They're coming out here in a couple of weeks to do some filming with us. Absolutely love these guys. Um, so, can you cure Candida auris? Currently? Okay, so we had a friend tell us yesterday, and I wrote to two of my doctor friends, uh, texted him. Uh, he couldn't get nystatin. The doctor gave him a prescription for nystatin. He goes to Walmart. They're out of nystatin. Do you suppose nystatin, which used to be a, a dollar a prescription, and now it's $100 a prescription, do you suppose it's inhibiting Oris? Do you suppose Nystatin might become the drug of choice? There's a company that say they're developing a pill that's going to reverse uh, Candida Oris and their stock. <laughs> so a friend of mine wrote me today and said, you got 2,000 bucks laying around? They're a buck 80 their stock. Why don't you buy 1,000 shares of their stock? Because I don't think Candida Oris is such a big deal yet. 
I want to prevent it, but I'm not taking a drug, even nice statin, to prevent it. I am very bullish, you guys know this, on beta-glucan. And I'm taking it every day, because two years ago I didn't for two weeks, and I got sick. I think beta-glucan putting glasses on your immune cells is absolutely the way to go. Let them see the aurus if it gets into your body. Remember also, folks, sick people go to hospitals. These are what we call iatrogenic illnesses, where people take lots and lots of drugs. And what do they eat? Mmm, the best green jello any hospital has. And blueberry muffins and soda pop. And you can get unsweetened soda pop. Anything you want in a hospital. And more drugs, more drugs, more drugs. Um, of course, it's limited to hospitals or care facilities because that's where the pharmaceutical companies are making the dough. Okay, so Sarah, currently they say it's not. They say that over 50%, as a matter of fact, 67% of people who get it are dying of it. These are older people my age uh, who just aren't cognizant of what I've had to learn through the years. My exercise better be regular. My diet better be different from an old guy's, right? Uh, my supplements are different. I rotate them. Um, oh, good. Thank you. This is... Uh, Ivy Raz, I got the Synergy Science Echo Machine. Do you not love it? Now, I'm going to talk with them. I'll talk to Paul. I'm very certain that they can filter out pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, I love it. Thank you so much. Same here. Um, good, good stuff. Finish watching The Truth About Cancer. Was I in that? The Truth About Cancer? Easter, oh, Eastern Medicine. Okay, I, I'm speaking at their next symposium in Los Angeles, TTAC coming up. Really impressed, but so many of the doctors recommend medicinal mushrooms for treatments. What do you think? Thank you, JF. Okay, I'll say this again, and this is Doug's hypotheses. Remember, I'm the guy that put together Doug's hypotheses here. Can we put this up, John? Here's what I, do you guys remember the flux capacitor? This is Doug Kaufman's flux capacitor. See that thing in the middle? On the left, it says human DNA. On the right, it says fungal DNA. Down in this lump that's forming, it says hybrid formation cancer. This is human DNA converging with fungal DNA because these are both eukaryotic cells. So that would make sense. They're not prokaryotic, they're eukaryotic. And here we have a lump forming in the body. This is Doug's flux capacitor. Um, so I, I showed you that for a reason. If in fact, uh, JF, first of all, let me say, I've read many, many studies. I'm where you are with chaga and medicinal mushrooms and so forth. Um, the studies are interesting and just like uh, uh, Ty and his wife Charlene going to those seven countries. As you know, I was in a couple of them, not with them, but 50 years ago. And, and they're shaman. They're, they're uh, doctors who work in rainforest. I mean, it's unbelievable, folks. It's just a whole new world in these countries. I got to witness that a little bit firsthand. If your symptom, if your disease benefits by eating nutritional yeast, by drinking kombucha or kefir. If you really, my headaches have been gone. I've been on kefir for two months now. Uh, my headaches are totally gone. Um, if your lump on your neck, your lymphoma, is shrinking, if the palpable lump in your breast is getting smaller on mushrooms, on yeast, then could we determine from that that the etiology of that lump might have been yeast, fungus. Fungus grows in a sack. One of them is called a mycetoma. Science says it mimics a type of cancer. How do you tell if that's a, a tumor in my breast or an ascomycete or a mycetoma, a sack fungus? Why do they grow in this sack? So the white blood cells can't eat them up. Collectively, they're strong. And these are ugly little guys. They don't want you well. They'll do anything to keep you from getting well. Okay, so 
the, the rules of homeopathy, uh, JF, are you treat like for like. Um, and what if the etiology of your health problem, that chronic cough, that nasal congestion, that thing growing on the side of your head, what if the cause is fungus? Then wouldn't yeast or fungus help melt that or help you feel better or get more energy or stop hacking, stop coughing, stop your sinus congestion? Yeah. My concern is, do I still think cancer exists? You know, I've come 50 years in this. They're not, certainly, the medical community is not ready to admit any lump or tumor in the body is an ascomycete or a mycetoma, a lump of fungus. I still think maybe cancers exist. And my worry is if you're eating chaga and mayatake and mushrooms every day, and that is uh, a real cancer, are you fueling that? I mean, it, let me step off the deep end. There's a book, it's called the Holy Bible. Bacteria isn't mentioned in that book. Uh, protozoa, virus, the word doesn't exist. But 40 times mildew, leaven, yeast is mentioned in there. And in Leviticus, this is really cool. In Leviticus, the Lord tells Moses and Aaron, hey, that's your land. But if I put a spreading mildew in a house in that land, why not butterflies? You know, why not PCV pipe? Why not uh, sunglasses? If I put a spreading mildew in that house, you must go and tell the high priest, ooh, I got it on my clothes, I got it on my skin. I mean, and the NIV Bible says, why was mildew so dangerous? This was a type of fungus that could spread rapidly and cause disease. Whoa. This book says it. These books don't. Oh, one of them does. It's the ones I wrote. Um, I really think an incredible, extremely credible science has been totally overlooked. It isn't taught in medical school. What if our lumps, bumps, polyps, etc., ovarian cysts, what if they were ascomycetes? Wow. So if medicinal mushrooms work for you, I know they're credible. If they work for you, maybe the etiology, maybe if they work for a couple of months, you should say to the doctor, can we try and knock this thing out? Would you give me some Spornox and nice statin? I'll go on Kaufman's diet and see if I can stop getting these lumps on my body. Bats, okay, this is Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Bats in New Mexico dying in droves with fungus on their faces. John will remember when that first came out. I wonder if we can find those old videos of me. It would have been 20 years ago or 15 years ago. I, Debbie, I remember when that happened. The first time in a magazine, a science magazine, I saw one of these cute little bats, you know, with its wings open, and it had this big white thing on its nose. And, uh, you know, I said to a friend of mine, either, you know, either this is yeast or they're doing cocaine, you know, because right around their nose. Well, as it turns out, it took them a decade a decade to find out they weren't doing cocaine. It's a yeast, and they died. They got it in their lungs. Folks, I'm telling you, we are dying of diseases. Our children are all on anti, not all, huge number. Doctors love medication for children. Huge number of children on antihypertensive, uh, you know, GERD medication at seven years old, uh, antidepressants, uh, hyperactivity, it's unreal. And a lot of us are dying. A lot of us are dying, just like the amphibians, just like the bats. Only no doctor, no scientist would believe we're dying like these bats, because we don't get this big ring of white stuff around our nose, like the bats are black, you know, they got these, it was so interesting, this thing. The eyes were dark, the wings were dark and everything, and this huge white, and I looked at it immediately and told my friend, it's fungus. They got a fungal infection. A decade later, oh, guess what? They got a fungal infection. Um, so thank you, Deb, okay. I had systemic candida 10 years ago from taking way too many antibiotics, killed all the good bacteria with yeast coming out of my eyes, my ears, my mouth when I coughed. Allopathic doctors don't know to tell us to take probiotics. It's unreal. It's unreal.
once again, dare I say it, this is the only show you're going to see this being said, Houston, we have a problem. I've done this show before, but I need to repeat this. Do you feel kind of on your own? Um, I, I don't think I'd be comfortable in a doctor's office. You know, and, and yet other people tell me, Doug, it's important when people have symptoms that they go to a doctor. Yeah, but they're going to end up on a pill. No, they aren't. Get the diagnoses. Then all of us have one of these or one of these little things, you know, that you can type into and, and find out maybe an alternative approach. But get the diagnosis, you know, from a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. There's the bats. Yeah, there's the bats, John. I saw one, yeah, I think it was in Scientific America. Those are bats that are dying or dead uh, because of that stuff. And John, this goes back to the, what, 90s or something. So what was that 15 years ago? So early 2000s. And remember I kept saying, it's yeast, it's yeast. It's, no, no, it's not. No, these are, you know. I mean, I just, here's the cool thing. Doctors are being deluged today with what you and I have been deluged with yesterday. Chytrid, chytrid fungus is killing all these amphibians. It's the most pathogenic mold ever found. They're dying in droves. So are we. And number two, um, this candida auris. Doctors are biting their nails. What do we do with this? 3,000 people have died. We are changing the genetics of our bacteria and our yeast in our body thanks to a mycotoxin. Mycotoxins are known to be mutagenic. They change, they mutate our genes. We're swallowing antibiotics like it's going out of style. We're urinating. Pharmaceutical companies are grinding them up when they don't use them. Oh, just be careful. And you know then, John, remember yesterday we were doing a bunch of filming and you said, hey, can I be honest with you, Doug? You sound a bit, little bit like a doomsayer. You know, you were, you were saying, uh, boy, you know, our doctors don't know this. You got to be careful. Yeah, I just meant if I was hearing you for the first time, it would really frighten me. Hmm. Thank you, John. And don't let this happen today. John said if he was hearing this for the first time, it would frighten him. I'm alive. I'm almost 70 and I don't have symptoms. I feel really good. I go to bed in the evening. John and I laugh about this. When we try a new exercise, I had a, a 45 pound thing with you know 20 pounds on each end, so 100 pounds, and I was doing some squats and I'd stand back up. In the morning, you know, I woke up and oh, boom, like that. It was either I drank alcohol, I had a bowl of ice cream, I went to a party, uh, or I did a new exercise. It's so cool to be this age and to see a cause and effect relationship ensue. I know many of you do. Ah, oh, Doug's right. I mean, how many people have woken up um, and, you know, saw blood in their urine first thing in the morning and go, oh, no, this is horrible. That's right. I had beets yesterday. Lots of them. I love beets. Okay? That's where we're going with all this, folks, and that's where I hope to, before I die, uh, leads you down that uh, leads you down that road. So Debbie, good for you. Thank you for that information. The chemicals in our water has always bothered me. When my daddy died, I was utterly shocked when the hospice nurse flushed all of his medication down the toilet. Surely this must be very must be very harmly harmful. Whew, man, <laughs> by the end of a day, I am tired. Leanne, uh, thank you for that information. This isn't one flush. We have a gluttonous appetite. Maybe not you, maybe not me. We're a minority. We in America have a gluttonous appetite for going to the doctor and going on medications. I don't know how this happened. You see, I'm not the kind of guy who would want my blood pressure managed four hours at a time. It's not who I am. I want to know why it went up. I'm not a guy who would want my heart palpitations managed. Well, Doug, you just take this. Yeah, but I only have it once in a while. Well, we want you to take it every day. Remember Fosamax? 
started breaking down bone? Wasn't it to build bone? I'm so mixed up today. Can that medication cause more pain? Oh, no, 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 no. See you next, uh, 10 seconds, go. It's not who I am. I don't belong in a doctor's office. I don't do well, I don't think. Um, but millions and millions and millions. You want to know the stat? How many Americans take at least one medication? My guess would have been 10 to 15. I thought there were that many millions of people that bought the story hook, line, and sinker. I'd be wrong. The number is actually, the number that's being reported is 70. 240, 230 million Americans. And by the way, John, when you get our age, people, I have a dear friend who's currently on 26 medications. You and I, normally five to seven. What the heck? What are we thinking? Oh, and by the way, let's get back to what um, uh, Mr. Ramsey or uh, uh, JF, might be Mrs. Ramsey said. I watched the, did it, any of you see that thing? Um, the Truth About Cancer, Eastern Medicine. The Truth About Cancer dash Eastern Medicine. Hey Jordan, can we put that link? The Truth About Cancer, Eastern Medicine. I think that's a prelude to my giving my talk on fungus and cancer. They want me back again this year because they're right. Fungus and cancer have much to do with one another. I hope you can be there. I'd love to shake your hands. Last year, there had to have been 2,000 people there, and a million saw it. It's a tremendous thing they have going there. You can watch it on the internet. So if you can't make it, if you're like me and you don't like to travel, watch it at home on your laptop. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, so there's, it's, you guys rock. Marsha, here's my friend Marsha. Hey, Doug and crew, Marsha and ND from Indiana. I've interviewed one, two, three NDs this past week. Three naturopathic doctors on this show, on this set, this past week. Thanks for the blessings of all you do. It's, uh, Marcia, the, the blessing, the honor is really ours. Man, Indiana. Do we get people that ask for a doctor in Indiana, John? We should keep Marcia. She's Dr. Trumbauer, T-R-U-M-B-O-W-E-R. Keep her name on the computer. Uh, so, uh, Mary Lee, that's a cool name of spelling it, Mary Lee. What can I do for bone density? Well, in the old days, we told women, just take a lot of calcium, right? The best thing, you guys, sure, there's, uh, you know, vitamin K and there's vitamin D and calcium, magnesium especially, lots of supplements I can think of, but I got to tell you one of the most important things exercise. You heard me saying as an old guy, I'm doing these squats. You try and mix it up a little bit. I did one on TV the other day that a lot of people liked. I worry when I watch TV at night sometimes, um, there's this lady who fell down in the bathtub or something. Number one for me, I'm how embarrassed. You know, the paramedics are going to come see me sprawled out there. But number two, um, I fell down and I can't get back up. So she probably broke something when she fell down. So I came out with this exercise years ago where you put a, a big towel in your garage or out in your backyard if it's private, and you get down flat on your back 10 times and very quickly, and you do this in a minute. How many times in a minute can I lay flat and then get back up? And then lay flat and get back up. And you can get it up to eight or 10 times in a minute. It's a quick clip. John fell down in a dark restaurant he was on the way to the men's room and he didn't know there was a step down. And uh, he's in his early 70s and the people just gathered to him and said, oh, we're so sorry, we don't, oh, I have a free dinner. Um, and he said, no, 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 I'm great. And it must have blown their minds, John, when they saw an old guy, just get back up and walk away, thank God. We are gonna hit a time, John, when we'll be in our 80s and our 90s but I want to keep doing that. Get down and get back up again. Exercise those muscles. Great for bone density. You don't hear a lot about that, folks, because supplements make money. Medications make money. Exercise doesn't make money. But you really have to do um, 
exercise. Move it or lose it. Um, okay, Nikki says, my husband and kids have horrible eczema, blistering on the hands and feet, then cracks, peels, and wounds. We have tried so many remedies. What causes this and how do we heal it? First thing I do, I'm going to tell you what 30 some years ago I used to tell everybody at the dermatology clinic I worked in. And, and we didn't have these at the time, 30, a third of a century ago. We do now. 10, 12 bucks, go to Home Depot, Lowe's, get a Petri dish, and test your bedroom. You're there a third of your life. Um, and within a few days, follow the directions. Within a few days, if you see green or growing, remember Leviticus? If I put a spreading mildew in a house in that land, it can cause disease. Eczema is a dermatologic disease. Um, so first thing I do, there's likely, Nikki, how are the pets? Usually the pets are affected first. I mean, that just boggles my mind. Um, but you see dogs uh, losing their skin or becoming depressed or cats uh, acting differently. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I have to go home tonight and take care of the cats. John, while I'm doing my computer work or I'm watching something on TV, my wife is traveling, um, They'll both sit, one, one on, on one arm of the chair and the other on the other, and they'll just stare at me. They don't say a thing. Every once in a while they go, meow, you know. <laughs> That's my night. Um, so pets first. How are the pets at home? If you notice strange manifestations, strange symptoms in your pets, you may be next. They're 10 pounds. You're 100 pounds. Uh, but generally speaking, Nikki, if one person had it in the house, I'd say, mm, it's the person. If more than one person has it in the house, it's the house. What kind of mold is doing this to them? Okay, get it tested. It'll grow out in a few days. Follow the directions. Send it off to, uh, depending on where you are, there's laboratories everywhere that can do these tests now. And they'll have an address on the, the uh, enclosure where you can send it. Find out what the mold is and you'll find probably a link to human dermatologic conditions with that mold. Let me ask you this, Nikki. Have you, okay, my husband and kids, um, have you guys taken a vacation? When you get out of the house, what happens? All of them are so thrilled because the eczema's gone after a few days. Okay, that's what I used to recommend to some of these uh, doctor's patients um, to get out, get, we're, we're probably a 10-hour drive to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and there's something so majestic as you get out of the flats of Texas and into those hills. Remember, there's a sign that says, Welcome to the Land of Enchantment. It is. Um, and I would recommend people in Dallas, and i got to tell you, uh, three of four, mm, half who went away, left their home, got better. It's a home run. When they come back within two or three days, and they're all excited to come to the office where I was working and say, Doug, you were right. We got away. A psychiatrist would say, no, it's not that. It's stress. There's no stress when you're traveling and having fun. I say it's mold. Okay? I hope that helps. Uh, Doug, I've had, this is from Joy. Hey, Joy. I've had Aspergillus fungus for seven years. You thought I might try a week of Sporinox and a week of Nizoral for a while. I've been doing this for five weeks. The mucus is reduced, but it's still there. So it must be a lung problem. I'm going to try an ozone treatment in my nose and my sinuses. Good for you. Do you think that might speed up the process? Also, Doug, my doctor looked up my nostril and said he could see polyps. Then he even took a culture and sent it off to a lab. It came back negative. Hmm, highly suspect. The Mayo Clinic said they found fungus in 90%, 96%. Hmm. I don't know. Um, you know, when, when I'm so sure of something, if I went to doctors and I got a, a result like this, I'd probably say, could we do that one more time and send it to a different lab? Um, okay, so here's what we have. We've tried a couple of strong antifungals, Nizrol and Sporinox, and by our own testimony here, um, I've been doing this for five weeks and the mucus is reduced, but it's still there. Some better on just a couple of weeks of something you've carried around for a long time. The polyps alone, polyps are a little fat. My boss, Dr. Godshock, used to anesthetize the nose, 
uh, with a little lidocaine, then go in with this snare, big metal thing, and he'd snare the polyp. He had a suction device, and he'd pull the polyp out. It looked like a grape, a peeled grape. Um, but the Mayo Clinic said most of those, they find various fungus in those. So I still think, Joy, the fact that there was some improvement is good. Till you get the polyps gone, you probably won't be able to breathe very well at all. I'm glad he found them. Um, see, he would have probably had to pierce the polyp and then wipe the Q-tip for an accurate uh, aspergillus mold uh, diagnosis instead of just wiping around it. Um, yeah, so consider getting those taken out. It's not so inhumane anymore as it used to be 50 years ago when I used to work in that field. Um, I hope that helps, but I think we learned a little something, didn't we? Uh, in that it's some better. Becky asks, what's the title of your latest book? Did you notice today when I was being interviewed and they asked that? I had to think for a second, because I'm writing the woman's book, and we just had, the woman's book is done. It's at the type center. You women have to tell me if it's not the greatest book. Um, we had a lot of fun writing that book, and it took a long time to write it. The newest book is Eating the Right Foods to Feel Great. Basically, it's the Kaufman Diet Guide. Eating the right foods. Boy, that doctor today said these recipes are a home run. Chili con quinoa, Cuban marinade, oh, pumpkin turkey chili, slow cooker. Mm. Uh, so it's eating the right foods to feel great. It's online if you'd like to buy a copy of it. Um, that would be great. Um, what can you take to kill fungus? Uh, Merrily, there are um, various and sundry things. Number one, we can starve it. And according to a doctor, a pulmonologist who has been on my show, that alone could help 50% of all you watching right now. Just go on the Kaufman diet for a month. 50% of you would be better. Now, if you've got a polyp in here, and so you can't, can't exhale through your nose, okay, that's a problem. So think about reducing or trying to eliminate that polyp. And I don't have a problem. If I have a bump or lump in my body that's occluding some normal physiologic process and it's not dangerous, it isn't in the middle of my brain, for example, I'm probably all for having someone anesthetize that a little bit, pull the polyps out. You won't believe how good you'll breathe. Uh, in this case, to kill fungus, starving it. Um, and there are many different kinds of people. There are people watching the show right now who are a lot like me who say, I want to do everything supplement and food, okay? Supplements, most supplements kill fungus. Vitamin C, the B vitamins, zinc. I mean, the list is endless. You hear me talk, caprylic acid, oregano, uh, vitamin D3, uh, uh, lauric acid. The list is endless of antifungals. Um, and then there are other people who say, Doug, I want to a little more quickly get rid of this. Um, and in those cases, like I saw at the hospital, this is where I really cut my teeth at the hospital, um, Diflucan and Nystatin, or Sporinox and Nystatin. Uh, these are prescriptive drugs. They say they're, they are concerned about liver toxicity with them. In the years I worked and saw hundreds of people who took these drugs, I never saw one liver enzyme elevate. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's what we got. Betsy, that's my sister's name. Hi, Doug from Georgia. Can you have a homemade fermented cabbage made with Himalayan salt? Remember Kyle when we learned about pink Himalayan sea salt? Uh, and probiotics. Also tapioca starch, coconut amino acids on the phase one. Yes, yes, yes. Um, fermented cabbage, sauerkraut. Um, huge yes. I love bacterial ferments. Lactobacillus acidophilus, probiotics. I love bacterial ferments. I'm a little weaker on yeast ferments like alcohol. Uh, so sure, uh, homemade fermented cabbage. Oh, have you guys ever fermented beets? Oh. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, you can buy fermented beets in the store. Tapioca starch, sure. Coconut um, amino acids. Amino acids, in Texas, I was shocked when I got here from California, 
you know, a thousand years ago. Every home out here is brick because, you know, we get 10 degrees in the winter and then we get 120 degrees in the summer. So it makes sense to build homes that way. Think of an amino acid as a brick in a home. So you pull out a brick in the corner, not a big deal. Pull out two of them, not a big deal. Pretty soon with three or four bricks gone, the home is going to start to fall. These are building blocks of every protein in your body. We call them amino acids. Um, so that's uh, uh, what she's referring to here. Stacy, does this correlate with biofilms? See, this is why I love this audience. Stacy, let me show you. I've said this before. I've done this on TV a couple of times. And somewhere here, I don't know where I have it. Yeah. <coughs> I probably misplaced it. Oh, here we go. Biofilms, I think, Stacy, contribute eventually to very serious occlusion diseases like atherosclerosis. So here is one of those little post-it, you know. I think this, and biofilms, you talk to most doctors today, they'll say the B word, bacterial biofilms. Everything, remember, when all you own is a hammer, the whole world's a nail. Um, so bacterial biofilms, they know. Fungal biofilms are very, very common, if not more common, but they're learning. Um, so this is a biofilm. Now you, you put this into my artery, and it's really not going to be a very big deal. If you put two of them into my artery, eh, you know, not a huge deal. Now, you put that into my artery, and it's going to cause occlusion, it's going to cause blockage, it's going to cause hypoxia, it's going to cause symptoms left and right, hypertension, etc. Um, biofilms, folks, are these little organisms that form scotch tape. So it isn't just this yeast or this bacteria circulating, they'll park on sticky stuff. Okay, and that's what uh, Stacy is referring to. Uh, she's probably a scientist. Uh, yeah, fungal and uh, how does this correlate with fungi and bacteria are known to grow both cellularly and in biofilm formation. Hope that helps. Okay. Um, wow. Linda says, love you, Doug. Thank you. The keto med is working. Thanks for your wisdom. I need it so much. Have you guys, do any of you have a cup of coffee in the morning? And you're thinking, eh, you know, I don't like the cream. I don't like the, uh, we have here at the, for guests and employees, we have honey that they squirt into their coffee. No, no sugar, we have honey. Um, and, uh, or a little organic cream. Well, one of the guys here uh, said, you know what I do? I get a cup of coffee and I put a half of a scoop of the keto mitt in the coffee. You know, our interest is peaked. Now you can't peel this away from us. That is the best tasting with the coconut oils and with the, uh, with the components of that, half a scoop, and you get one of those stirrers. You can't shake it up. The stuff with an oil base, MCT oil base, um, you've got to get one of those battery-powered stirrers. It just takes 30 seconds, stir it up. Oh, tell me, John, that isn't the best that makes your coffee absolutely great. Linda, you've got to try that. I'm so glad the Keto Med is working. Um, Alan is overjoyed with his company. His phones are going off the hook. It's Keto Med, it's a ketogenic diet uh, meal replacement. And uh, it's amazing. I'm so proud. I'm so happy for him. Uh, Judy says, Doug had vancomycin in a pick line for endocarditis. Now I have several polyps in my nose, I hemorrhaged, and I don't want the surgery. The nose hemorrhaged? Um, how do I get rid of fungus? Was exposed to 160,000 spores of pin, aspergillus, eight years ago, fighting for my life. Um, wow. Okay, vancomycin, I know how severe your problem was uh, for endocarditis. I have several polyps in my nose and I'm hemorrhaging. I'm, I'm wondering if she, I'm hoping she's meaning her nose is bleeding. By the way, nosebleeds of unknown etiology always think fungus. You're living in a moldy home, okay? She's been exposed to mycotoxins. Penicillium is the mold. The mycotoxin it makes is called penicillin. Aspergillus and aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is known to cause human cancers. 
done. So she's really, really sick. Judy, um, I don't know where you live, but I'd love it if you could see a naturopathic doctor or a doctor of osteopathy or a medical doctor that I might know. Maybe you could let the guys know here. What is it, John? How do people let us know? She's Facebook, um, uh, something at Know the Cause. He's getting it. We need to know where you live, just what state. But you're right, you do need some help. Uh, and I know you've been to many doctors. Um, I don't think they would understand uh, this. So you need a, a real specialized doctor. What's that? Something at Know the Cause. No, no, remember, if she wants to communicate with us, there was something like, yeah. what is it? Email us at, oh, live. Yeah. Live at knowthecause.com. Live or live. I live at knowthecause.com. That's okay, John. Um, just tell us what state you're from, and they'll get that information to me, and I'll get it back to you. You definitely need a doctor. Uh, this is Marsha again. Miss seeing you on Facebook three times a week, but I'm watching you on God TV. Wow, she must have direct TV. Would you be available as a reference for my dissertation for my ND? Absolutely, I would. Marsha, be in touch with me. Um, as a matter of fact, you know who asked me to uh, write for him for his uh, medical school entrance was Luke. I knew Luke when he was getting his bachelor's degree, then his master's, and then he graduated from medical school. So, Marsha, I'd be more than happy to do that. Doug, can you prescribe antifungals? Uh, no, I, I can't. Um, uh, I really wish I could. In other, in other countries, uh, antifungals are over the counter, but not here in America. And here's where I think antifungals, let me separate antifungals from supplements and diet. If I woke up tomorrow morning and there was blood all over the middle of my sheet, hmm, okay, that would get me thinking. There's something bleeding inside of me. I'm a guy. Um, that's not normal. So I'm trying to figure that out. If I wake up tomorrow morning, I've got this huge knot on the side of my neck. I'm thinking non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, I am going to a doctor <clears throat> and I'm going to say, can you help me? I got your name from a friend. Uh, I'd like to be with you for quite a while. I need you to steer this ship and help me. Um, I'd go to the internet, I'd pull off some of Doug's references, go to pubmed.gov, pull off many references. This bleeding of unknown etiology, we know that nosebleeds, epistaxis it's called, uh, is due to fungus in a moldy room. I'm wondering if I have a fungus, because to be honest with you, I live in a little bit of a moldy, mildewy home. The doctor I don't think is going to understand that. The point I want to make is, if I had a very difficult symptom that really scared me and got my heart racing, I would take antifungal drugs. <clears throat> I'd take them for a month while I'm following the Kaufman diet. I'd know at the end of that month, it's been 28 days. I've woken up and there's no blood on the sheet. And look at this thing. It's down 70%. I think this, thank you. I think I made it through a fungal condition. Um, then I'd say, okay, doc, thank you so much. Go ahead and take my blood and make sure my liver wasn't wrecked. Um, but I now want to start taking caprylic acid. I want to start taking, uh, rotating it with resveratrol. Very good, safe antifungal supplements. I'm going to stay on the Kaufman 1 diet for a period of time, see if I can get this totally gone, stabilize all my blood chemistry results. Uh, that's what I would do. Now, where do supplements and diet play a role? Most of you watching, I've said that today, half of you watching, could just follow my diet. Many of you have. Thank you for your notes. And you're doing wonderfully. The doctors this week that I've interviewed, all of them have recommended to their patients the Kaufman diet. How cool is that, that people I will never meet have benefited from what I've done. Isn't that really what life should be like? Um, 
So uh, that's where I think supplements, to live a healthy life, I believe, is to become actively antifungal and antibacterial, which means eating peripherally in a store, eating lots of greens, eating the right uh, fruits. I saw an article, I wish I would have printed it off and brought it in today. It said, it just came out today, scientists now believe that a high protein diet means you're gonna die young. Wow. Do you think there's some factors we need to consider before we write that? Meat with a hormone, a known estrogen mimicker in women and men, meat with mycotoxins in it, that's protein. Milk, residues of those mycotoxins, that's protein. Peanuts, known to be infected with mycotoxins that can hurt or kill us, protein. Do you think we should have clarified which proteins are then okay? I don't have a problem with eggs. I know doctors do because we're all going to have high cholesterol. You'd think they'd be pitching eggs out their door, giving them to people so they could put them on statins. Um, we, we're being irresponsible, but then medical journals are enabling irresponsibility. Okay? As long as we hook them on drugs, remember what the goal is. Is it achievable? Okay? Um, Okay, uh, for maintenance for a healthy person, what supplements, silver, et cetera, would you recommend on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? Thanks. Okay, I live this life. I might go, I've done it. I might go a few weeks, past two years, even the few weeks I go without supplements, uh, and I'm eating very clean. I'm exercising regularly. I always take beta-glucan. I am going to be hooked to that because I darn near got pneumonia, darn near died two years ago with all my traveling and my crazy schedule. I don't want that to happen again. Um, so I take beta-glucan on a regular basis. <clears throat> these that I teach you about, Optavita, these are in my medicine cabinet, uh, as is olive leaf extract, as is vitamin D3. I take almost always uh, a multivitamin. There are many, many good ones out there. I love the ones with, that are loaded with B vitamins, water-soluble uh, B vitamins. Um, you would think that I'm a guy that throws down a lot of supplements. Now, if I feel a scratchy throat, my buddies have always been able to help me. Um, and uh, so uh, those are kind of my go-tos. <clears throat> I think if you take really good care of your health, don't eat out at a lot of restaurants, or the ones you do know that they have organic, local-grown fruits and veggies, grass-fed meat, fresh-caught salmon, etc. cetera, um, then I think you'll minimize the need uh, for all the supplements. But once again, to live a healthy life, in my opinion, is clearly defined as becoming, maybe you're not, becoming actively antifungal, okay? Yeah, okay, so Sherry, my uh, husband has fatty tumors growing all over his body. One is close to the size of a golf ball. One is growing next to his spine. Can these turn into cancer? Likely not if they haven't already. Uh, these are just fat, fatty tumors. Um, and I would, especially with it growing close to the spine, I would go to a doctor and get them cut off. I had this done once to one. Uh, and they just use a little... Okay, one negative, Sherry, to exercising on a regular basis is you're wet. Your skin is damp a lot. I'll drive home. It takes me half an hour to drive home wet because I just worked out. You're more vulnerable to these fatty tumors that grow on the body, little adipose tumors. They're not a big deal. Uh, but if one's growing close to a spine, close to an eye, something like that, no big deal to pay a couple hundred dollars on a Saturday morning and have it or have them removed. It really isn't. Um, I would consider doing that. Likely not if they are, are not cancer yet, uh, if they haven't been diagnosed as cancer. Okay, here's something I don't understand. So thank you, John, for doing this. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Uh, Dolores says, what do you recommend for a young lady, 19 years old, diagnosed with POTS disease? Okay, so that stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It is a condition in which 
a change from lying to standing creates an abnormal increase in a heartbeat. Wow. I've got to, do you guys remember your diet when you were a 19 year old girl or boy? Now, of course, it has a label on it. Um, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. Change is in the wind. She needs to change. A 19-year-old prying me off of Coors beer when I was 21 years old um, would have been a very, very difficult thing to do. I don't know what post-traumatic stress was when I got home from Vietnam. All I knew was, I remember I, I went on a, a date and we were in, uh, at UCLA. John, do you remember down there on Bruin Boulevard, all that? Um, all the theaters, and there are millions of kids out there. It was a fun place to be. You had to buy your tickets <clears throat> way in advance. But I was with uh, a girl, my neighbor, who I went on a date when I got back from Vietnam. And that's when low riders, they were bouncing all over the place. And uh, one of them went by, and we were all looking at the low rider, and it hit the ground, and it sparked, and went, Pew! and my heart, I almost had a heart attack. I sweat. When you hear a loud bang and you see sparks like that, the last time I had seen that, it was napalm, you know, going off. Uh, so it really, really scared me, and Coors slowed that down. It didn't make me that scared. But when you're 19 and you're suffering from a disease, which is an autoimmune disease, which they will want to treat her for, I would rule out fungus first. I think we are duty-bound, fiduciarily bound, to tell this young woman, would you do me a favor? Uh, what does a 19-year-old girl want? You know, I used to, the kids at, at USC, when I was working with Dr. Hughes, the kids, the boys wanted baseball cards, the girls wanted Barbie dolls, so I used to say, look, if you'll follow this diet for a couple of weeks, I'll give you this Mickey Mantle baseball card. Boy, I probably gave away a million dollars worth of cards. Um, find out what she wants. Maybe it's a car. Uh, and tell her you'll put $500 in for that car if she'll follow the Kaufman diet, Kaufman 1, for one month. And my guess is, with some supplements, a daily multi, because all of the things in there have antifungal. If you can just get her to do a daily multi and change your diet, I think you're going to see some drama within five days, certainly within 30 days. I think she'll be able to go from lying to getting up and feeling great. This would boggle the average mind of the average doctor. I fully understand that. I've seen it. I worked clinically with a bunch of these doctors. But we're not here to make the doctors happy. We're here to help a young lady get better. And I think the Kaufman diet, maybe resveratrol, which is the reason purple grapes are purple. They have an antifungal component on them. Um, once a day, use some psyllium holes before she goes to bed in the evening. Probiotics, see how she does. Beta glucan, immune modulation. Uh. Okay, so help her with that, Dolores. Thank you. Uh, this question is from my 94 year old dad. Wow, Deb, that's cool. His name is Bob. He gets sporadic itching only at night. It's not in the same place, but moves around his body, back, stomach, arms, legs, midsection, etc. It's not every night, but it occurs frequently during the week. Does he take a bath before he goes to bed? My grandpa, Henry, man, I hope to see him again. I know I'm going to. Uh, grandpa used to drink, now, John, you're going to love this, and a lot of the older audience right now will love this. Grandpa used to drink, do you know what a hot toddy is? Okay, Grandpa used to drink a hot toddy every night before he went to bed. And uh, on, on rare occasions, he allowed me, it smelled so good, it smelled sweet, to have a little sip of it. Man, I'd go to bed higher than a kite with like, you know, seven years old. One sip of that. Um, look for what dad is eating at dinner time. You're going to find there's something. Maybe it's a Coca-Cola. I can't fight with a guy. He's 94 years old, and that's my goal, is to be 94 years young. Um, the sporadic itching means it's something he's not doing every night. Maybe he takes a bath before he goes to bed those nights. Heat aggravates fungus, and you'll itch, and it would be sporadic itching. Now it's here, now it's here, etc. Uh, maybe it's a hot toddy. 
Maybe it's a soda pop at dinner. Maybe it's an alcoholic drink. Uh, maybe it's stress. Maybe somebody's not so nice to him some nights. Uh, there's a whole lot of things you need to consider here, but, um, you know, um, look for that factor. The brilliant person is not the one who looks to a doctor to end his misery. The brilliant person is the one who looks inside and gathers people that they love to help them figure out the problem. Sometimes with a few simple changes, this won't happen. Uh, then I'm thinking nettles, N-E-T-T-L-E-S. Nettles is a supplement that has anti-inflammatory, anti-itch properties. You don't want to take Benadryl, uh, but nettles might really help him until you can get this figured out. Such good questions. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, now, isn't this neat having an hour and a half? Do you think we should shoot for like three hours? My voice would be so gone the next day. Uh, okay, Todd, I just wanted to thank you, Doug. Oh, I suffered with psoriatic arthritis for nine years. I asked you a question months back on here, and you gave me a copy of your book, The Fungus Link. I took your advice and got to my doctor, and he wrote me a prescription for fluconazole, that's Diflucan. After one week, my skin almost completely cleared up. I took the medicine for two weeks. I did experience lots of die-off symptoms, but I'm looking forward to wearing shorts again this summer, and my dermatologist can't believe it. Thank you, and God bless you. Wow. That is me, you guys. This is impossible for me. I told uh, a doctor today, I am living proof God still uses wretches to get his work done. That book talks a lot about what I talk about. You're not seeing doctors talk about it at all. You're not seeing medical schools teach about it at all. That's the Bible. Lots about mold, mildew, yeast. Medical books, nothing. Lots of bacteria. Very profitable. I mean, I mean, very necessary that people take lots of antibiotics. Statin drugs, hormone. Look, if you just understand that because a doctor, an OBGYN, wrote a book in the 1960s professing that if women would just take estrogen and progesterone, um, their libido would maintain, their skin would look more youthful, they'd have minimal heart uh, risk, they, or their heart attack would go down. Same thing we're being promised with statins. If women just took these drugs, then in 2000, the Women's Health Initiative started 67,000 nurses. They studied. Those who took estrogen and progesterone had more heart problems, more cancers. The reason that this doctor ordered these drugs is because one of his kind wrote a book where he said, oh no, these drugs are good for these women. They weren't. So goodbye hormone replacement to a large degree, right? Hello statins. Okay, I'm gonna land it there. Thank you guys for being with me. Do you have any friends who need this? Would you just forward them this hour and a half video? They might fall asleep at 10 minutes, but tell them, give it five more minutes and it'll spice up a little bit. I really enjoy you guys being with me. Todd, all of you, God bless you. Great questions today. YouTube, Facebook, God bless.